What's up, everybody? We're at a, an, an edition with my friend Matt Hoots from Sawhorse Design Build. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Good. We're going to be testing a, an edition that's being put onto an, an older house in Atlanta, and it looks like this. For density, we're adding on a duplex at the rear of this house right here. They will not be connected, but this is one of those things that I often get a question, how do you blower door test an addition and make sure that the, you know, what's the standard? And the standard is generally make sure that you don't make the house leakier than uh, it already was. But also what Matt is doing, which is really smart, even if this was an addition that these people would be using, is there going to be a door connecting the two? There's not, there's not a connection at all. Okay. If there was going to be a door, though, you would either put the door in and then seal it up tight so that we're not testing the old house, or, uh, and you would have already tested the old house before you began this process, or you do what Matt did, which is just not cut the passageway through, which is not going to be there anyway, but you haven't sealed anything either, right? Correct. Not yet. So we're looking at, like, the holes in the OSB, all the seams are going to be sealed up. Yes. Um, and what are we using to seal this up? So we're, I mean, the, the, the coat, we're looking at a liquid apply membrane, we're using thermocoat. Um, but before we do that, we're going to address all the, the seams first. So we're going to caulk all the seams and then basically spray on top of that. So it's like a liquid applied membrane. However, this is better than the liquid applied membranes that are on the market, low VOCs. It also um, helps with uh, you know, radiant energy and stuff like that as well. So this is typically applied on the outside of a structure, um, but we're going to actually apply it to the sheathing. Um, we're also going to apply it to the crawl space and show some details of how to properly seal a crawl space and meet the energy code and keep the term right guys happy. Nice, that's uh, not an easy build. So we're gonna go ahead and do the test in with the blower door, which I've got right over here, to make sure that we understand what is going on dynamically in the unsealed house before we then seal it up. This is how tight you need to get when there's no jam or anything to stop you. <laughs> Last step you always do. Good. Yeah, one of the benefits of this pandemic and supply chains is that our windows are 16 weeks out, so we decided to do this experiment. Uh, we covered up the openings with the OSB. We're going to seal all these joints, and we're also going to coat this as well. So when we're doing this experiment, we're going to do the blower door again with the complete building envelope sealed up, including the, the openings for the windows. Now, once the windows arrive, we will cut those out. We'll flash around the windows, but for right now, we're leaving the OSB in place so we can do this experiment. All right, and we're ready to blow. Since it's unsealed, we're gonna assume that it's probably pretty leaky. And we gotta take off another ring. Eighty-five fifty. Not as leaky as the last house that we tested together, uh, but we're definitely this. The sealant is going to make a big difference. We hope on the seams here. So we'll come back and test. Well, let's be fair. The last house didn't have sheathing. That was just siding. So <laughs> that was definitely different. So. All right. So the reason we're conducting this experiment is to show the difference between typical OSB. Now most builders install it like this, and the only thing they do on the outside is they'll put a house wrap. And what we're trying to show is that the control layers, if you air seal from the outside instead of trying to air seal from the inside, it's better. So we're gonna do the next test we're gonna do, we're going to have all these seams sealed up. We're going to have the bottom plates sealed up. We're gonna seal the crawl space, the attic, the roof line, and basically spray a coating on top of this called Thermacoat. Now it's gonna coat all the sheathing. So basically that's gonna be our weather resistant barrier. Now our argument is that if you do all that from the outside, it doesn't matter what future generations do to re re renovate, because a lot of times what they'll do is they, they count on that drywall for the air sealing. They're like, hey, this is this is our air, this is our air barrier on the inside. Well, what happens if somebody renovates? What happens if somebody cuts a hole in it? You don't know if they're gonna make that patch correctly. And also all those electrical boxes, you've got lots of places for air to come in, move through your assembly. So if you control everything from the outside, that's gonna be much better. And what we're gonna to try to do here is once we finish air sealing, we wanna show that you can pretty much get close to the energy code, um, if not better, just from air sealing the outside of the building envelope. This is a good example of showing where air could leak inside the house. Now, a typical house, you just take house wrap, put it around that, and hopefully your insulation is doing its job. But if you have that plus bat insulation and not a good air seal, 
air can be coming through here and into the building as, as assembly. So what, what we're going to do is basically seal that up, spray it on the outside, and if, if daylight's coming through, that means that air's coming through as well. So this is just a good example of, again, it wasn't constructed improperly. It actually looks really good from the outside. Once you see the daylight coming through, you realize that that is a weak point in the building envelope. Now, it's much darker in here. You can't see any of the pinpricks. We have a zonal pressure testing running on the uh, house next door that is not connected. Remember, because this is, it's an addition kind of, but it's also totally separate. So we're gonna set pressure. 50. We're running at 23% of the fan speed, and we've got 2300 CFM. 6.6 6 air changes per hour at 50. We came from 24, so you guys did succeed in air sealing yeah. this place by 75%, which is pretty good for one, just one layer. One I'm sure there's one. just one hole if you fill it up that would find. It's so. probably, it's probably yeah. that. So, and it's probably in the hottest, most uncomfortable place in the entire uh, house. So let's see if we can find that. Now, while we're at this, by the way, let's just review this guy real quick. The house next door is at 49.5 uh, pascals, 49.6 we'll call it. And I just want to remind everybody that we're at a 0.4 baseline. So you actually add that. So it's a pure 50 next door. So essentially that house is, has no connection at all with the rest of this house, which is good because now we don't have to worry about things like if somebody starts vaping in there or cooking Indian food all day long and somebody here living here doesn't like those smells, then it's not gonna be an issue. Okay, just like I always do, we flipped the fan around. So now we are blowing air into the house and not blowing it out of the house. So I'm pressurizing the home and instead of 2200 CFM of leakage, we've got 1200. That is not normal, number one. And number two, it tells us that probably some something weird is happening. And so Matt tells me that this tape that they put on on the seams of the uh, from the inside around where they're doing windows only, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, windows only so they didn't waste the nice sealant um, taping up from the outside, or sealing from the outside. This was applied by painters who are not instructed on envelope tightness stuff. So essentially, what we just found out is that when I depressurized, it popped some of the seals on this tape. And now that I've pressurized, I'm actually fixing some of the leakage that was happening with this tape. Probably there's still some left in that, so I bet we're actually more like, I bet we're down around three air changes per hour. Probably. Um, but we're just, we're just above that, actually. So, so addendum, we've now achieved just over, just over three air changes per hour at 50. And let me show you this. We're at 3.376. Now the way, and as long as that number doesn't go above 3.5, it actually rounds down to three because the energy code is written so that it says you have to achieve three, not 3.0. So that rounds down, so you're actually at the, <laughs> so you don't have to do any more air sealing. We just found out. Okay, cool. Yeah, as long as the windows don't leak. So now, if we're gonna test again, so now, if we're gonna test again later after the windows are in, we can, we can compare how good the air ceiling was now without the windows in to the windows and we can just grade the windows if we wanted to do that kind of a test. So, so this is kind of like what you can do with this tool. It's pretty amazing the amount of experiments that builders could be running if they cared. A lot of builders will say, but air sealing is so expensive. How, how much was the material that you air sealed this place with? Um, we probably used too much material and I used the, the most expensive caulking that I can get at Sherwin-Williams. So probably spent like maybe 200 bucks on that. So, okay. and, and that's usually what you're gonna be spending air sealing on the inside. The reason I like doing it on the outside because if you have any penetrations, well, you're also bringing the moisture and stuff and those, those are weak points. Mm -hmm. I build new houses, but I'm also a remodeling contractor. So I get to see all the mistakes from the last hundred years of other contractors, what they do. And that's why when we build new houses, like we just avoid everything that we saw other builders do. So, I mean, whether you're using this system or another system, you're, if you're using like the zip system, you're either gonna be using the liquid flash on this and putting the tape. And again, it's the same amount of labor that you that you would have with some of these other systems. Again, we're trying to show what a typical builder does and how we can 
fix a typical building. I would also recommend um, gluing the sheathing up. A lot of people don't do that. Mm -hmm. but I really like like that. That helps with some of the shear strength. And also, if there's if there's you know if any of the sealant comes off in the future, we have that extra layer that's basically holding it up. But also, the, the key thing is to make sure it's vapor open. And 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 so here is the crux of this entire video: is that we just figured out because Matt experimented with it and found that there is an alternative to zip system, force field, LP, I can't remember what LP's version is, but this weather resistant barrier incorporated OSB. If you just take OSB and you build the weather barrier into it, you can set, specify the permeability rating, yep. which the thermocoat is very permeable. And then you can air seal it yourself with, with materials that you're getting. I mean, I just think that the amount of customization that's possible here, if you're like dealing with Supply shortages, yeah. which we're all very familiar with, cost differences. Well, I mean, that was one of the main reasons we used it here because we, we were dealing with, uh, again, we, we do like the zip system. We like, and we're not going to say like one system is better than the other. Like, there's going to be another house. We're using yes. this system plus the zip system. We're using the zip system in one area. We can't get to certain areas. We're actually going to air seal with this product on the inside and, and also in the crawl space. So you can't put all these products. I mean, to, to say one manufacturer holds a monopoly on, on everything, like this probably does much more than the Zip system does, but you can't say like, I'm going to go with one brand and that's going to solve every problem out there. Right. We every use multiple brands different. here. We, we use a sealant. We also used uh, a little bit of spray foam. We also, I had some leftover sealant from another job. Again, probably wouldn't have bought it for this one, but I've got a case of it. Might as well use it. So we're going to use the, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be brand specific, but in, but in this case, the Thermacoat gives us the, 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 the air barrier, the vapor barrier, but more importantly, we did some, we did some work in the crawl space as well. Mm. The challenge in the crawl space is like, how do you deal with that band? Because in Georgia, we have termites. You can't use spray foam right there. So we use the, the thermocoat on the band right there. That's going to air seal, give us that, um, that air seal that we need. And then basically we're going to put rock wool in there. So basically it's rock wool plus thermocoat gives us a better crawl space. Right. Awesome. So a little backstory on this white stuff behind me. I've got the co-inventor of it right here. His name is Thomas Sharp. Tommy, thank you very Hi. much for being Thanks on the channel. So, so this is called Thermacoat. Yes, sir. Tell us about it. Okay. Uh, well, it's something that my father and I invented uh, almost 40 years ago. So about 38 years and um, here in Atlanta, it's a local product. Cool. As a matter of fact, we invented the whole genre of insulating coatings here. Interesting. Okay, so, so basically it's You've seen this kind of thing where it's like paint that's got R value, which when when you say that to somebody like me, I'm like, mm, I, I kind of doubt it. So, so Corbett, when you say something me. that to us <laughs> that makes it, we kind of look at it very questioningly too. Good, good, the building, okay. the, the, the industry is uh, corrupted okay. big time. So tell us what is wrong. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to like spend more time looking at the, at the camera since I'm doing not a, not a great job. So tell us how other manufacturers do it wrong and how you guys are correcting that. Well, there's so many claims of use on the space shuttle or design of the space shuttle. Really? Oh, Wait, okay. people are saying this is used on the space so, shuttle? Oh, not. yeah, or it was invented by NASA. And this, I mean, that, there's so many different stories on that. And okay. so NASA probably holds a lot of the patents on this. Um, you know, all the information to, to make this is available in the library. So one of okay. the first steps we had to do before the Internet was to spend time in the library and teach ourselves how to make a tile on the space shuttle. Huh, interesting. Okay. So so essentially, the problem is that R value, when a paint claims R value, and it's really what it's doing is reflecting and using emissivity to do its thing. That's not actually the R value test, right? Which is why you guys it's, are more well-known in Europe. Right. Can you explain the difference between the, the insulation value tests of we, the two? We can. The United States solely relies on C-177 guarded hot plate test, which is designed to test mass insulation. Okay. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't take into regards of a thin film insulator. It just, it can't accommodate for it. In Europe, they have an EN ISO 9869 that does in situ measurements. And over in Europe, we're able to go, we could take a, a building and take measurements on it and do an application on it and measure that after. Or what we've preferred to do is to go build two identical structures every time we do a, a test on a different type of building. You know, make sure that there's no trees or buildings that cast shade. They don't cast shade on each other. And we use the same materials. We flip a coin once they're built, once they're built flip a coin to decide which one's going to get the thermocoat treatment. Interesting. And uh, always use uh, uh, sit panels for roofs, you know, the uh, metal with foam, 
and it's an actual applications process. You're going to build the, the place, you're going to put it on, and then you're going to see how it actually performs. And it's then they've got, so the insulation place that grades insulation for Europe will have all of their embedded instruments already wow. into the walls okay. while this thing's being built. And here, just to clarify, the R value test in the States is like, a, it's like this, right? A horizontal, on a, and they do... Well, a hot plate, and when I say hot plate, the guarded hot plate, I believe the part of guarded on a hot plate test here in the United States is to, is to keep it from you that it's only running at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. And it doesn't apply, like there's a, a material that we just found out about that has an emissivity of 1.6, which is not supposed to be physically possible if you're like talking about emissivity. So there's all kinds of ways that we you know, it's just like institutional racism or something that we're all learning about where it's like, I didn't even think about that. And it's just the way that it is in America. We do all kinds of things that are like, somebody made the decision. So I like that uh, that this is doing its job already. I, I think, I mean, it was pretty hot in there when we were on the blower door, but it might be because we're sucking all this Atlanta air in June through it. <laughs> so just remember, home is a system. Say it to yourself, say it to your clients, say it to your neighbors and your family, because one product does not fix all things. And also, uh, I'm going to release a video soon, because last night, literally, I had a conversation about somebody going off the rails enough times in a row by making decisions that they probably saw on this channel and saying, oh, this is bad, I shouldn't do that, so I'm going to go with this instead. And it's like, every house is different, every house requires a custom, uh, and you need to put your thinking cap on, you need to have a guy like this to help make the decisions on site and th and that can be a consultant and then you can be the enforcer or you can have a general contractor who really knows what they're doing thank you very much for all yeah, your time I, and for i do i do want to make one quick point so yeah. like you made the quick like don't take any of corpus videos out of context don't take any matt risinger's video out of, out of context you can apply what they're talking about if you've watched every video on the channel i've had people say hey i saw this one detail on corpus yep. channel or one, one detail on matt's right. channel i'm like well that only works if you're doing this that and the other without that context understanding how the whole system works together they potentially could be causing a causing an issue. One hundred percent. So you can you can modularly craft a system that will work for you. Make sure that you're thinking about solutions that are like maybe forty years old that you've never heard of. It's not because they don't work. It's maybe because just the powers that be have decided like, oh, we're just not going to sell that because it doesn't make us as much money as the other thing will. Sure. So. Think about all of that stuff. It's a system. You're a system. Your home is a system. Comment if you have other things to add. Questions as well. Like and subscribe. Tune in next time.